Talking politics with Russell Norman. Yes, environmental politics, plenty of that this week. Russell Norman, co-leader of the Greens. Good morning to you, Russell. Good morning, mate, mate. Hard to know when to, where to start, really, I suppose. <laughs> it, uh, I remarked the other day, um, it almost felt like New Zealand was under attack, but from within. <laughs> yeah, it seems the government's um, pretty keen to take on or take out as many bits of the conservation estate as it can while it's still in government. I found I found the whole idea puzzling, um, as you know, from a strategic point of view, that uh, the national government was, was wanting to do this in their first term, because I was thinking, well, they're, they're going to they're going to leave out all this kind of all this crazy stuff that might get people um, environmentalists up in arms until their second term. Um, what do you, what do you think's behind it? What why why now? Why are they going about this right now, Russell? Uh, well, I mean, I, the, I don't really know the answer to that, to be honest with you. Um, it does seem just a bit senseless. But, I mean, you know, obviously they've got close relationships with the mining industry. They set off down this path with dairy. Um, they didn't anticipate the kind of reaction they've got. And so they're just kind of intent on showing that they're not backing down completely by leaving the door open to these remaining areas. Mm. Um, but I, I still think they're underestimating the strength of public opinion because they poll constantly, um, so national are polling constantly, and I think the polling will be saying to them, you know, oh, the whole thing, all the balance stuff that national keeps talking about um, between economics and the environment. But I don't think they really appreciate once this campaign gets up and running and is focused on particular areas of the country, um, actually, the public's position will harden against mining, like Great Barrier and the Coromandel. Yeah, it it just feels like the like New Zealand has moved so far away from ideas like digging up the conservation estate that this idea that that it could even potentially happen um, on on well, with, with the new plans that National are talking about, the, the idea that it could happen it just seems. Absolutely ludicrous. I mean, I would imagine st- absolute civil disobedience would occur before any of this this went ahead. I think you're right. I mean, I, I, I don't think New Zealanders will let this happen. I mean, people will gather. They will mass um, uh, in front of bulldozers to yeah. stop this happening. I mean, there's no way they're going to get away with it, I wouldn't have thought. And in the process, they're going to lose. National will lose a whole layer of New Zealanders forever. Because there were, there were a bunch of obviously a bunch of swing voters in the last election that um, that that wouldn't have bargained when they voted for national they wouldn't have bargained on this because it wasn't campaigned on by national. Now John Key gave the message yesterday that well they didn't have enough information about the uh, the mineral wealth of New Zealand for us to even make comment on it before the election. But how can they come out afterwards and then say well I mean because this is a pretty major move right if they didn't campaign on it how can they do it? Yeah, I mean, it is hard to believe that they it just kind of was came up after the election and that they'd never given it a single bit of thought before the election. Uh, so it does seem very strange. I mean, one suspects that it's something that Jerry's had in his mind for a while. Uh, they didn't campaign on it because they knew how unpopular it would be. And now they're giving it a crack to see what they can give to their mining industry mates. But you know, I mean, I, let's face it, like if, the if they've campaigned on it, they probably would have lost the election. It's that hot, hot a topic, isn't it? Yeah, that people, uh, people don't support mining in the special places, in mm. our conservation, in our um, national parks. Mm. The, the rebuttal that um, we, we're constantly hearing now, though, is that there is existing mining already going on in the conservation estate. In fact, over 80 mines what, what what is the nature of these mines, Russell, and and uh, and how big are they, and uh, and how how can they still be happening on the conservation estate? It's it's certainly true that there are there are mines on the conservation estate, um, but the whole idea of Schedule Four um, was to put aside some areas within the conservation estate and elsewhere, um, which we all agree aren't going to be mines, and so the conservation estate covers all sorts of land. Um, but the Schedule 4 areas were, were the special places that we, we, we all agreed wouldn't be mined. I mean, I think it's important to realise that this is a national unwinding a compact, if you like. The way we resolved the big fights about mining in the 80s and 90s yeah. was through Schedule 4. Um, and so Schedule 4 is a, is a subset 
of all the conservation estate, and it includes some non-conservation estate land too, that we agreed would never be mined. So the, the key is actually trying to confuse the issue by talking about the other mining sites on the conservation estate, because Schedule 4 is entirely different to that and was always intended to be so. Okay. It, it, it's funny, isn't it? This is all happening just as, as, as the, um, the stickers are finally falling off those old cars that are still driving around from the 80s that say uh, no mining Coromandel or something along those lines. You used to see them all over the place. Yeah. Russell, what about, how does this affect the relationship that you have with the national government? Because I know you're not, you don't have a confidence and supply agreement, but it was only just last week uh, that you were saying that the Green Party's agreement with the government had taken a step forward um, with with regards to a draft proposal for the regulation of national, uh, sorry, natural health products. Um, so, so on one hand, you, you seem to be a little bit cosy with the government, but on the, on the other hand, they're doing all this other stuff. You know, they're trying to keep you close at the same time. So we have a what we call a memorandum of understanding with National, um, in which we vote against them. Uh, we vote against their budgets. We vote against them on confidence. So we vote. We we don't vote for them on the votes that keep them in government. Um, but we have a few areas where we cooperate with them, like the cycleway, um, like the home insulation scheme, and this um and this thing about uh, getting a New Zealand uh, regulatory system for natural pro- natural health products. Um, so we think that you know in politics. Uh, people expect you to act in a mature way, and mature way means you know don't just be oppositional all the time on everything. If mm. you can find some common ground, work together. Mm. Um, now, obviously, you know when they do really terrible things, it does make it a bit stressful to work with them in areas where we agree. Uh, but nonetheless, we think that you know we should work with them in areas where we agree. I mean, we get quite a bit of flack from Labor about it because they're quite tribal about all this stuff. But Labor actually vote with National in the House heaps more than we do. Um, yeah. Um, like vastly more, like Labor vote for most of National's legislation where we vote against most of National's legislation. Um, so, you know, we, we just think you've got to be, you, you just got to work with people where you can find common ground and, and oppose them where you don't. Russell Norman, co-leader of the Greens, thanks very much for your time today. My pleasure, Wemo. Time now is 19 minutes past eight here at Radio Wemo Breakfast. Got a track now from the...